Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 9.45 a.m. virtual Sunday morning service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you've joined us, either via Zoom or Facebook Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's begin with our opening chant, Blessing to the World. Oh, 
the heart, you are the hands, you are the voice of spirit on earth, and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world. I am the heart, I am the hands, I am the voice of spirit on earth, and who I am and all I do is a blessing to the world. We are the heart, we are the hands, we are the voice of spirit on earth, and who we are and all we do is a blessing to the world. And so now, please join me in prayer. Let's just take this opportunity right now to close our eyes, to turn within, and to open to the truth beyond our physical senses, those senses that tell us there's a me, a you, a him, a her, a this and that, and to know that there really is only one life, one power, one infinite, unconditional love and intelligence and creativity. And it is out of this one that I call God that all creation comes into being and its nature permeates everything and everyone in the universe, including me, including each and every person gathered for this virtual service this morning. It lies at the center of everyone on this planet. And I know that as we come together for this service this morning, that that presence of the divine reveals itself through each and every element of our time together. We feel its vibration of love that allows us to feel interconnected even when we are not physically in the same space. I know it is that love of the divine that inspires each of those who are of service this morning. And I know that we feel inspired by the divine operating through our musicians, Sam and Karen, through our soloist, Gia, and Dean, who leads our chants. And I know that Dr. Mark is that perfect channel through which we hear the message that we have come to hear today to remember the truth of our divine nature, to feel it more fully, to experience more fully, and to carry that divine essence out into the world, into our lives, blessing others. And so how grateful I am for all the blessings we receive in this time together, knowing it's all God in action. And so I say, thank you, God, and I release this word knowing it is already so in the mind of God. This service is blessed. And so it is. And together we say, Amen.
So now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now, please join in our congregational hymn, I Know. Now, we have the opportunity to give ourselves that gift of just getting still, coming into that now moment, and connecting with the divine essence that lies in each of us. So for the next five minutes, as we meditate in silence, I invite you to just close your eyes, get still, and silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over to yourself, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Everyone has a melody Something you just have to sing Your soul song Your soul song I love to hear your melody inspires me to sing my soul song, my soul song. The holy rhythm is a beautiful thing, our vibration resonating through the music we healing the elegance of life is what we're feeling now I am the captain of my soul God is the ruler of my heart all day Thank you, Gia. Thank you so much. Good morning. Welcome. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for being with us for virtual church today. Uh, I hope you had a happy Christmas, and here we go. You know, every day I think uh, life or I say life or we ask ourselves a question, and this question is, will we live in the kingdom today? Will we live in kingdom consciousness, or will we live in the land of scarcity, fear, separation, you get the idea. But we get to make the choice. Uh, whichever we choose, life says yes to our choice, and, and it becomes real. Now, we could look um, at the Bible 
uh, as a story of unfolding consciousness, our consciousness, the consciousness of humankind. I think the entire Bible uh, takes place within us as our consciousness evolves and grows. So I don't see it as stories about people long, long ago. I think it's all about our spiritual journey now coming home to an awareness of our oneness with the Spirit of God within. So Adam and Eve are in the garden, and it's paradise. Imagine that. Life seems to be going along very, very nicely. You know, to us, there is a conspicuous absence of drama. That's what I'd say. And doesn't that sound just wonderful, for there to be a conspicuous absence of drama? God, I love those days. Anyway, I think of that moment, the split second, when we all know we shouldn't do something, or we all know we shouldn't say something, or we just know we shouldn't, and yet we do it anyway. You know what I mean? We give in to that temptation, and we do it anyway, and then I regret it and probably make an excuse for why I did it to justify. So Adam and Eve are in the garden, and God gives good to all. God gives the gift to each and every one of us. The gift has already been made. So all of Adam and Eve's needs are met. They can go anywhere in the garden. They can do anything. They can go to the tennis courts, the shuffleboard, the swimming pool. The, you know, it's all at their disposal. How wonderful. But they are told this one thing, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, at this point in their existence, Adam and Eve believe that there's only one power because everything about life is good. Everything is working for them. Their needs are met. They have no worries. But they are told if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will risk the whole thing. You will start to believe in two powers. Now, God is the only power. We believe that. We teach that in the science of mind. God, one power. Right? But your mind is enormously creative. My mind is enormously creative. And with time, we will gather evidence and start to believe that maybe there are two powers. And here is where the trouble comes in to our experience. Yeah. Don't eat from this tree because you will have toxic thoughts and you will become toxic yourself. This tree will make you sick. This sickness is a sense of separation from God. And where you believe you are separate from God, in those areas of life, that's where you will have difficulty. Now, it seems to me as I think about it, you know, humankind, we just could not resist the temptation of taking from the tree and eating of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, all right, so imagine this. Humanity has taken from the tree, we've eaten the apple or pomegranate, depending upon which tradition you come from, and now there's judgment, there's criticism, there's blame, shame, regret, and the belief that we are separate from God. Wow, all of this from a piece of fruit. That's incredible. So note the first thing that Adam and Eve experienced upon eating from that tree was shame. And shame is a belief that I'm bad, I'm wrong, I'm not okay, I'm not lovable, I'm not enough. Now, that was not given to them by God. Shame was not given to humanity by God. You know, this isn't about a story about something that happened years ago. It's what's happening in us right now. It happens, I think, many times every day. We are continually trying to recover from it. Every day, the potential of paradise, the potential of living in the kingdom is here. And so, is it true, though? We can either live in paradise or step into separation. You know, we can live with all of our needs met or have this understanding, this belief in good and evil, two powers. I think we all know, everybody knows, we've known since we were little people on the planet. We should be loving, we should be kind, we should be compassionate. But first, all right, I think I'm going to have to judge just a little. I'm going to criticize just a tiny bit. I got to, I got to put this little bit of blame out there into the universe. It does us no good. I just think that eating from this tree is actually habitual. Yeah. We think with shame. We think with blame. We fear a lot of the time. And what that does is it diminishes us as a spiritual being. Many of us have trees, uh, I'm having real physical trees in our yards, <laughs> that do appear 
to run out of fruit at some time of year. They're dormant for a while. Now, the tree itself actually never runs out. Isn't that fantastic? It never runs out. It just goes dormant for a little while. The abundance is still there on the inside. It's just unseen, and it's waiting to come forward at its right and perfect time. So here's how I think it works. We have a belief, whether that belief is spiritual truth or whether that belief is something from the world of error. We have a belief, and from that belief, we behave a certain way in the world. From that behavior, we have an experience in the world that supports the original belief. This becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. We've been trapped by a belief, often a really limiting belief. So here's an example I want to tell you about. A person with not great self-esteem gets the courage to ask someone out on a date. Sounds good, right? All right, so that's the behavior. The behavior, the action they take in the world is to invite someone out on a date. Unfortunately, he gets turned down. Uh, the experience he has is rejection, right? And so he tells himself, I'm worthless. No one's ever going to want to go out with me. I'll be alone forever. I'll never ask anyone out again, blah, 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 on and on. That's the belief. He goes deeper into self-pity, right? So his self-esteem decreases even more. He avoids potential dates. He doesn't go on any dates. He doesn't want to meet people that are being introduced to him. He reinforces what he believes about himself. I'm worthless, I'm no good. Now the sad part, it, it doesn't stop there. He feels so bad about himself, and this is what happens for all of us, is that it permeates his being. He exudes this vibration, and it starts to affect and infiltrate all the other areas of our life. You can't just have bad self-esteem or feel bad about yourself in one area. We have leaky margins. It's going to infiltrate all the other areas. Because experiences result from behaviors, and, and a behavior is the result of a belief. And that belief in his particular case was the belief in not being okay, not being enough. Now, if we find ourselves trapped by a belief, we have to tell ourselves, this is not the truth. This is not what God created. This is not how the universe, God, spirit, life, truth sees me. See, because our experience validates our beliefs, and we act certain ways again and again and again. So the temptation is to just keep doing this. But you know, before his enlightenment, the Buddha had many temptations. Jesus was tempted many times. So think about this. We are in really good company. Yeah, we're in good company. You know, but, but like them, we have to also say no. In A Course in Miracles, it, uh, A Course in Miracles calls a miracle a shift in perception that removes a block to our awareness of love's presence. So a change in our thinking, a change in our perception so that we are now able to see the presence, the activity of love. It's a shift in the way we think, the way we perceive our experience. Now, we are all a part of God right now. This is what we believe. This is what we teach in the science of mind. God is with us all right now. As much of God, as much as God will ever be present within us, God is present right now. And we can become more and more aware of that presence over time. So I think during the day, we will we'll go to the tree. I do. I think we're going to go to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we'll probably even start munching a little bit. But the progress is to catch ourselves mid-bite. Yeah, that's it. The goal is to catch ourselves separating from God and say, no, this is not how I choose to think. This is not how I choose to believe. This is not how I choose to live. I choose to live and think and believe in terms of my oneness with spirit. See, we have to interrupt the cycle with what's true now. What is God's truth? What am I believing right now? What's the source of what's going on for me? Well, the truth of God is always love. Go big picture. Just chunk up. Big, big picture. The truth of God is God is love right now. God is abundance right now. God is joy. God is health right now. If I feel separate from God, I must be eating from the tree, right? Or I, or I wouldn't be being judgmental or feeling bad or critical, fearful, lonely, lacking. I know some of us not only feel we're in the tree, We've built a treehouse there. Yeah, that's it, you know. But I guarantee you, we will not make progress. We're not going to move forward. We're not going to have a better experience until we stop blaming other people and stop blaming ourselves. 
It's not creative. It's not healing. Nothing changes or improves because we blame ourselves or someone else. In fact, it ties us to the past. It keeps us. Blame keeps us in victim consciousness, which is such an incredibly uncreative place to be. No matter how good the story, don't you want a better life now? Damn, I do. I really, really do. And I think I've got some really good stories, some really good stories of victimization and done wrong and all that stuff. Okay, they were a jerk. They did you wrong. Or you goofed up. Or they did it to you. You did it to you. That was then. That was then. And this is now. You know, one of the things I love the most about the science of mind is that every day, every moment is a fresh beginning. And and I need a lot of fresh starts. I tell you, I need lots and lots of fresh starts. Um, you want to argue for your limitations, science of mind says, great, go ahead. And the universe will say, they're yours. Those limitations, you cherish them so much, you want to argue for them, why you're broke, why you're sick, why you're alone, why you lack, argue for those limitations. The universe says, yes, you can have each and every one of them. But what I think we need to do now, especially because we are at the end of a year, and we want to cl have closure with everything we could possibly have closure with so we can have a fresh slate to start a wonderful, and I do believe it's going to be a wonderful new year. Why? Because we all agree on that. To practice forgiveness of ourselves and others, just little by little. It's maintenance. It's maintenance. If we don't, we're storing what I'm calling today a kind of toxic energy. Each little shame, each little guilt, each little blame, each little resentment. And that clouds the filter that we see the world through. So I'm asking us now, at the end of the year, from now until the new year, every day think, who do I need to forgive? Who do I need to forgive? Who do I need to forgive? It is a daily process, one piece at a time. This is a spiritual practice. Learning to forgive keeps us awake, right? Do I have to forgive everything? Yes. That's it. Yes. Why? Why? Why do I have to forgive everything? You don't know what's been done to me. For you, for your sake. Again, this is not condoning anybody's bad behavior. I remember reading this story. This was quite a while back, way, way pre-COVID. And it was about these um, two dads who were at their children's hockey game. And the dads got into a fight. Now. I think that's pretty embarrassing, but anyway, I'm, I'm embarrassed for the kids that the dads got into the fight. And in this particular situation, now this is horrific, in this particular situation, one of the dads actually killed the other dad uh, from the fight. He, the dad went into the hospital and died in the hospital the next day. So now the grandfather of the deceased dad comes face to face with the other dad who's now going to go to prison for manslaughter. And he says, I don't have, this is what the grandfather said. He said, I don't have any animosity towards you. I don't hate you. And they shook hands and he said, I forgive you. And he did say <clears throat> that when um, the grandfather said to the man who killed his son, he said, when you get out of prison, I hope you will find it in your heart to work with other parents to educate them about what can happen when tempers rage out of control at children's sporting events. The bigness of the grandfather's consciousness was so extraordinary to me. You know, because, you know, where we hang on to pain in our life, it takes our lives down. And where we forgive, we get free. Just acknowledge it, forgive it, and move on. That's what we're here to do. You know, the, the new quantum physics, uh, in a quantum physics, uh, it's uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle reveals that as our perception of an object changes, the object itself literally changes. This is why I have to see you in the light of love. This is why I have to see our world as a peaceful, joyful, harmonious place. Because as I do that, it contributes. As we all do that, it contributes to changing the world that we live in. Again, from A Course in Miracles, it says, our greatest tool for changing the world is changing our mind about the world. If we're tempted to see ourselves as small, not much, our past, our mistakes, then we'll tend to behave that way again and again. But if we think of ourselves as these great, 
powerful, creative, spiritual beings, then that energy will not only surround us and emanate out from us, but it will be reflected in everything we do. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, remembering that right here we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. It's the most true, most real thing about each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Most High God. And so all of the qualities and attributes that exist in the mind of God exist in us. So right where we are, love is, peace is, harmony, abundance, creativity, joy, wholeness. Right where we are, God is. And I further know that we are all connected on the unseen side of life, that in the mind and heart of God, there's only one, we're all it. And so I speak this word for us that we are completing with this year, that any area where we have felt incomplete, any area that we have been unforgiving or unwilling, we surrender all of that into the infinite mind of God, knowing that with God, all things are possible. And because if we hold on to anything that doesn't serve us, it contributes to taking us down. And I know we are here to rise up and be the very best version of ourselves. So I know that we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye and we surround them with a light of love, a light of healing and peace and God's abundance. We know right where they are, all of their needs are met. We let our prayer be a blessing, healing energy in the world that we live in. So out from our own minds and hearts, we emanate a consciousness of peace and well-being and all needs met for all people everywhere. We bless our church, we bless all churches and synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. I'm certain that we are blessed by being together in consciousness today. That there is raising up, there is healing for all of us and we welcome it and we claim it and we give thanks for it. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, I invite you to sing with me one time through. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so I got 
some gifts and I'm blessed and I'll lay those critical voices in my head to rest I'm thankful for the journey here to this moment in time and I wouldn't go back and redo it for any reason or rhyme no no I'm saying enough Thank you, Gia. You can get Gia's uh, music on iTunes, so if you want to have more of that inspiration, she's more than happy to share it with you that way. And thank you as well as always Sunday after Sunday to our wonderful Sam and Karen. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, um, Reminder that donations over the phone, uh, you can make those donations uh, for 30 minutes after service. If you want to call in to the church number, 818-762-7566. And um, you can make your donation by credit or debit card. Also, if you missed the link earlier, you can make your donations online at our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. Please remember that prayer with a practitioner is available after service on Zoom. So if you'd like to be connected with a practitioner for a one-on-one -on -one prayer, uh, we can do that for you on Zoom after the service. You can continue to send your email request for prayer to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call into the office and option four on our menu allows you to leave a voicemail where you'll um, give us the information on what you want prayer for. And we are checking those voicemails and emails every evening and sending those out to our practitioners. So we'll be supporting you in consciousness. So this coming Wednesday, we have a very special Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen and our practitioner, Dean Regan. You're just doing everything for us, aren't you, Dean? <laughs> <laughs> Meditation, as usual, begins at 6.50 p.m. and the service will be at 7. And we hope you can join us for this end of year Wednesday service. Um, it'll be centered on the theme of world peace, 
beginning with peace within ourselves. And we look forward to seeing you there. I think that's a great way to end the year, right? And bring in the new. As Dr. Mark said, if we forgive, we find peace. So um, they'll help you do that Wednesday evening. Journey of the Heart 2021 campaign. We're just so excited about this campaign this year. And thank you to all of you who have signed up and given your pledges. Uh, you can still do so. Just go to our website and uh, you'll find, so it's nhcrs.org forward slash journey. And you'll find the pledge form that you can fill out. And also you can still access the free concert with the amazing Karen Drucker that we had on December 6th when we uh, kicked off this campaign. And we thank you for joining together with us to make 2021 our best year ever. We're knowing that together, as Dr. Mark said. <laughs> so blanket drive for the homeless. The last of the collected blankets will be distributed today. Thank you so much to all of you who donated to this wonderful cause and uh, we really appreciate it. We know that it's making a difference out there in the world. Coming up, so we have a goal-setting workshop with Dr. Mark on Saturday, January 9th. So that's a week from this Saturday. And you can sign up now for this amazing, amazing goal-setting workshop. And uh, Dr. Mark will be leading it. And it's a great way to start off the new year. Uh, you can find out information on our website. The cost is $35. Practical mysticism. Uh, I'll be teaching that uh, beginning Tuesday, January 12th. And this is a life-changing 10-week course. It's an exploration in mysticism and provides a framework for the student to live the mystical life here and now. The class is open to everyone, but it is a uh, prerequisite for those who are interested in taking the classes that lead up to practitioner training. Uh, tuition is 245 if paid in full, or 270 if paid in two installments of 135 each. Again, information and sign-ups can be done. Uh, you can get the info and sign up on our website. 2021 goal sheets. So I know we have this tradition where you get to pick up your goal sheets and then drop them off. Uh, we do that every year. Well, you can still do it. We're not abandoning that because we're in a virtual world. Uh, there's actually a very easy way. Just go to the website and you will find the goal sheets there for 2021. Download them, fill them out, and then you can mail them to the church with a self-addressed envelope and we'll mail them back to you um, in December of next year. Be a great idea for you to probably download one of those uh, before you take Dr. Mark's workshop. So you'll be able to start really getting those clear with your goals. Our Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday evening service, that continues. So you know if you're missing connecting with the congregation, get on uh, 20 minutes before or stay on afterwards and you can still visit and feel that connection. Our men's group continues to meet every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday at 8 to 8.15 a.m. And thanks to the practitioners who lead on uh, those days that are falling on the holiday, we're not missing um, any meditation. So you can get on with us on New Year's Day if you'd like and meditate. So to get more information or to know how to join us for those Zoom events, again, it's our website, nhcrs.org. And you can also sign up for our uh, monthly newsletters and weekly e-blasts. So with that, for this final Sunday of 2020, thank you for being with us. Let's join together and sing the peace song and wrap it up. <laughs> Peace.
peace that was meant to be with God as our Father loved ones all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me so please repeat after me I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.